Hey everyone, and welcome to this video about hash functions. In a recent video I made comparing lists to hash tables, there were a couple of comments asking what hash functions are and what they actually do. So in this video, I'll explain what hash functions are and what they are used for, without going into too much mathematical details. Let's get started. A hash function is not very different from any other function. It takes in an input x and it outputs an output y, but hash functions have the following properties. First, they convert a variable length input to a fixed length output. Second, they are collision resistant. And third, they are one-way functions. Let's go over what these three properties actually are. Here we have an example of converting a variable length input to a fixed length output. We have a couple of inputs, which could be a string, a number or anything else, because before it's hashed, it's converted to bytes. We also have some outputs, which for hash functions are usually called digests. And in our case, where we have a hexadecimal value, it is sometimes called a hex digest. As an example, we have a hashing function, namely SHA3256, which stands for Secure Hashing Algorithm version 3, 256 bit long outputs. If we take a look at these example inputs, we see that they are of different lengths. We then compute their hash using our hash algorithm. And as you can see, we get a fixed length output. In the case of the hash function we chose, we get an output that is 256 bits long. So once again, no matter how long the input, the output will always be a number that is 256 bits long. Let's go over the second point, collision resistance. When we talk about collision resistance, we mean the following. Imagine we have our input space, which contains all possible inputs for our hash function. This is basically any word, any number, or any value that can be stored as bytes. And finally, we have our output space, which contains all the possible outputs of our hashing function, which are all the numbers that are 256 bits long. A collision would be when our hash function is applied to two different inputs, like for and subs, but they give the same output. So ideally, what we would want for a perfectly collision resistant hash function is that each input in our input space maps to a unique value in our output space. Or in other words, each x as input maps to a unique h of x. Some of you might know this as a bijective function, because a bijective function is a function that maps each unique input to a unique output. Unfortunately, for a hash function, it is impossible to be a bijective function for the following reason. You can imagine that our input space is everything that is possible, right? So it's infinitely large. So I've got an infinite amount of inputs. However, the amount of things I should distribute the inputs over is not infinite because it only contains all the values that are 256 bits long, which is a lot of values, but it's not infinite. Third, what is a one-way function? A one-way function is defined as follows. Given an input to our hash function x, it is easy to compute the hash of x. However, using the hash of x or our digest, it is really hard to compute x. A great real-world example of this, that is not a hash function, but does show the idea of a one-way function, is the function x squared. It is very easy to compute that 2 squared is 4 and negative 2 squared equals 4, However, it is very hard or impossible in this case to retrieve two or negative two from the square root of four. So we never know from which value we started. But as you can see, x squared is not a good hash function because with the inputs two and negative two, the output value collides because four and four are the same. When we combine these two properties, people like to talk about first and second pre-image resistance, where image means the output of our hash function which we also know as a digest or hex digest. The first pre-image resistance means, given a y, it is very hard to compute x, where the hash of x is equal to y. And this is the same as the definition of our one-way function. Second pre-image resistance is the following. Given an x and a y, so given x and its hash, it is very hard to find another input x that gives the same digest. In other words, if we have an input tree, and we know for example its hash is 6, then it is very hard to find another word, let's say dog, which would also have its hash computed to be 6. Hash functions have a lot of use cases, one of which we have seen, which is hash tables. But they're also used for checksums, and in cryptography, in big data, and many more areas. We've already seen how useful hash functions are in hash tables. So let's look at another interesting example of checksums. Let's imagine you wrote a really awesome program which you want to share with the world. 
But there is a hacker which tries to imitate your program with a malicious program. You can then use the bytes of your program as the input to our hashing function, which produces this unique hash, which is linked to your program. This hash is then called a checksum for the following reason. If you do the same with the malicious program and you hash it, you get a different seemingly random checksum. So where it is very hard to compare the programs or the .exe files of each program separately, it is very easy to see that their hashes differ. So when you download software, you can often compare the checksum of the software you downloaded to the checksum that is listed on the website. This is an example of some cool software I didn't write. And as you can see, we have the download over here and we can click on sum to see the checksum of this software. So if we download the software, we can compute the checksum ourselves and see if it matches. There are a lot of hash functions out there with some of them as old as time and their security didn't age well. So if you're using a hash function for any security related purposes, it is important that you check which hash functions are currently still not broken and which hash functions are future proof. The example which I used in my video, SHA-3256, is a good hash function to use. Now that you hopefully know what hash functions are, let's take a look at how we can actually use hash functions in a programming language like Python. We import a library called hashlib. We can then select the hash function we want to use from the hash library in our case SHA-256, then we can feed some input to our hash function, and finally we can print our hex digest, also known as the output after applying our hash function to the bytes of the awesome program. Let's run the code to see the hash. Awesome, as you can see, we get a hexadecimal value, just like we're familiar with from all our previous diagrams. I really hope you learned something new in this video. If you did, please leave a like, and if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Peace.